wanted him to share it with, with, with the church, but, you know, preaching sometimes you just... Let me tell you a little bit about You prepare and you, you forget half of it and you add half more that you didn't prepare. That's how preaching works. So, but he told me the story of how that he was, as a young, as a teenage boy, swept into the drug culture. His story was very much like the Teen Challenge guys that would come and share their stories of uh, drugs and alcohol and hard drugs. And he said he was on a cocaine snorting binge where uh, it was, you know, line upon line upon line. And I'm not talking about the book of Isaiah. I'm talking about co coke. And I guess there's a little bit of knowledge that travels amongst the drug circles as they all have their little warnings of when to be careful that you might be going pushing it too far. And somebody had told him, they said, you know, if you ever are snorting a lot of cocaine and suddenly you just get sluggish and you want to pass out because apparently it does the opposite until you reach a threshold, then it can basically, you know, cause your body just to start to shut down. Then you know you're in dangerous territory and you need to call 911. Matter of fact, one of his drug snorting buddies told him, you're using too much, I can tell, you're headed for trouble. Remember this, if you ever get to the point where you just want to pass out, you better call 911. And he said that's exactly what happened. His mother was away, he was living with his mother as a teenage boy, and he had, you know, reached the, the limits of his body's ability to handle it. And he started crashing and, and, and crashing very hard. He said he t it took everything he had to stagger down the steps to get to the kitchen to, to, to try to call 911. And on his way to the telephone, he fell down in the floor and he bent over the couch and he said he prayed just two words, God, save me. And almost instantaneously, his head cleared up, his heart quit racing, his body quit showing signs of overdose. And the Spirit of God fell upon him, and he spoke in tongues, and he promised God that wherever he, whatever he says, I'll do. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Whoever you want me to be, I'll be. I've been running from a call of God. I'm going to be a preacher if you still want me and will still have me. But here's the point. When he got up from his sobbing prayer meeting and he was alive and he was well and he was sober, he had fallen at the very place where his mama, who was an apostolic woman, had a prayer altar. At that place, at that couch. You talk about a prayer pathway. There is something about a prayer life. It'll open a channel. It'll open a stream in the desert. That's why every family needs to have a home, an altar in our home, a time and a place where we pray so that when visitors come, children come, and they walk, it's like walking under a waterfall. You don't have to tell them, that's where I pray. Amen. The hair on the back of their neck will stand up because you've created a Bethel. Jacob said, this is the house of God. This is the gate to heaven. I'm going to build an altar here because this is where the heavens open. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands right now. My God. I'll never forget Brother Mahaney. His boy was an atheist. His boy it was a rebel. His boy was a troublesome. And he'd all, every time he saw his boy, he'd just simply say, let me bless you, son. And he would just, just like the Hebrews blessed. Uh, Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Thee shall serve the Lord with all your heart and soul. And he blessed him every time he saw him. And one day when that boy had reached the maximum point of rebellion, he broke because of a daddy's prayer. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? Your prayers are not in vain, brothers and sisters. Keep praying on. Prayer also reveals who we are. People who don't want to know who they are, they run from prayer. Because prayer has a way of divulging who we really are. Somebody said prayer is the means in which God gets his will done on earth. 
not the means in which man gets his will done. When you pray, here's where you, you enter into the zone of surrender. This is what I want to bring. This is the crux, the thesis of the whole thought tonight. And I'm going to wrap it up in five minutes. When you pray and get in the spirit, you belong to God's will. You transfer your citizenship, your identity, your schedule, your dreams. Is a servant greater than their master? If when Jesus desired for the cup to pass, then he had to retract his statement in prayer and say, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Then it should be no different with praying people. This is what makes prayer both exciting and sometimes dangerous. Because you go in wanting something. You want it your way. Thinking that your way is God's way. And it may be most of the time. But we always have to reserve the right for God to overrule us. When we enter into prayer, we become God's property. Ananias, when he prayed that day, had no idea that before the prayer meeting was over, he was going to be summoned to go knock on the door of a killer. But God says it's safe because I've ordained what's going on around here. My God in heaven, hallelujah. Hey Amen, I don't know about you, but as long as we wanna hold on to our own identity, hold on to our own agenda, hold on to our own mission and our own will and our own purpose, chances are our prayer is not gonna go very far. But when we are able to lay it all down, welcome. You've heard of never, 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 never land? Prayer don't take you there. Prayer takes you to nevertheless land. That's where you say, God, I know what I want. You know what I want. Who are we kidding? But I'm here in prayer and I'm willing to sacrifice my will so that your will could be done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. It's dangerous. But it's exciting. Praise God. And uh, let me uh, conclude with this concept. When you pray, remember, you belong to God. You don't belong to yourself anymore. And he has the right. He has first right to exercise his will. Watch this. And they went through the region of Perigia and Galatia, having, watch this, been forbidden by the Holy God. Boy, I got all kind of people telling me what God says they can do. Real few and far between. Where you come across folk who've been forbidden by the Holy Ghost. Hello? Remember what I said? When you go into prayer, you go into God's domain. And God has the right to say no. If you never give God permission to say no to you, you don't have much of a prayer life. They wanted to go, okay? They wanted to go into Asia. But they were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Now watch this. Three verses later, and in a vision... It appeared to Paul in the night, a man of Macedonia was standing there urging him saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. A lost, unevangelized, hungry people crying. They didn't have truth that Paul had. They didn't have tongues that Paul had. They didn't have baptism in Jesus' name that Paul had. They didn't have a revelation of Jesus that Paul had. But they had a heart 
pounding and yearning to be free. And a sinner suddenly messes up the plans of an apostle. And the apostle, because he's a man of prayer, has to acquiesce to the will of a hungry person in another country who's maybe never heard of Jesus but hungers for God. Oh! Hallelujah! Praise God! I'm asking you, I'm asking us as people of prayer to be the kind of person that God can send you on a mission. If, let me say this. Carolyn Mays is a well-known medical researcher that deals with noetic sciences. That's the study of, of, of things that, are, that happen in the realm of the intangible or the spiritual. And she told the story of a lady that she heard firsthand who had a car accident. And in the course of the car accident, the injuries were so severe that she had an out-of-body experience, a near-death experience. So like we've read so many times and heard, she floated above her automobile. And while she was hovering above her automobile, presumably dead, she heard the sounds coming from the automobiles behind her wreck that created a traffic jam. She heard curse words. She heard words of impatience. She heard words of complaint. Oh, of all things, now it's going to make me late. Oh, I can't believe these lousy drivers. Blankety blank, blank, blank. And then she said the fifth car down, it was like a searchlight beamed out of the top of the car. And as soon as she saw the fifth car down with the light, like, like, a, like a fountain pouring out of the top of the car, she came to. Subsequent to this, she found out that the people in the fifth car were people of prayer. And when they saw there was an accident down the road, they cried out to God to preserve the life of the person that is in the automobile in the crash. Oh, thank God for people that understand the value of prayer. That prayer can call us into an emergency when we've got other places to go and other things to do. But because of prayer, we become gods. And so I appeal to us tonight as we stand. When Sunday comes around and there's a hundred people we don't know in this building. A hundred. You want to say a hundred? There's at least a hundred people that will be here Sunday that you don't know. Would you please, when we lift our hands in worship, ask God to give you a vision in your worship of who you can help. Oh, I feel God. Let's ask God right now in the name of Jesus. The person may be the one sitting right next to you. The person may be the one with the screaming child. The person may be the one, I don't know, that is in a different social economic class than you are. But if God says, if God says they're praying, they're hungry, and if God says you're the one to reach them, Oh, if each and every one of us had a mission of personal evangelism. Saints, I know this wasn't a, you know, it might not have been a swing from the chandelier lesson tonight. But if we get this, look out. Look out. It'll be a, a long, hard way for people to walk out the back doors of this church. Because God will send missionaries right after them. Hallelujah. Pray for your neighbor right now. Thank you, Jesus. The highest honor when we pray is not seeing an angel it's not getting an affirmation of how great we are. It's not, you know, being able to boast to, to others of our prayer life. You want the greatest reward of being a prayer warrior? How about this one? When you become the answer to a sinner's prayer. When you call on God and then God sends you to somebody who doesn't know him like you do. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. God help me. Open my eyes. Give me a vision of who needs me. Somebody needs me. Somebody needs my testimony. Somebody needs my word of encouragement. Somebody needs to hear my voice speak into their spirit words of life. Somebody needs me to help them understand Acts 2.38. Hallelujah. 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 Do you see it yet? Do you see it? In the name of Jesus. When you pray, don't lay claim to your own life. Don't lay claim to your own future. Don't lay claim to your own ideas. You become God's property. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. My God. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Bend me, shape me, mold me, make me. Prayer is the place where saved people go to get lost. Do you hear me? Prayer is where saved people go to get lost. We lose our own agenda. We lose our own ideas. We lose our own sense of self. And we get a vision of something beyond who we are and what we want. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, open our eyes, help us to see the, the golden coin that's right at our own feet, help us to see that there's somebody right here in our own life, hallelujah, 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 I'm on a mission, I will not tire, I will not relent, in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on, quit asking for visions of angels and ask for a vision of a person. <laughs> angels don't rejoice when they see miracles. Angels rejoice when they see sinners praying. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, why don't we gather around this altar and just pray? Why don't we just lift our hands? Ananias never did anything else. Not ever, not anything else. He disappears after this. But to do this is to do everything. If we never do anything else, God give us a vision of somebody who we can help. Hallelujah.